So how y'all doing today? How's the love challenge coming? <laughs> I heard some oh gods, oh gods. <laughs> heard a couple laughs, a couple blessings. <laughs> Um, y'all still got the image on your, on your device? If you do, pull it up right now. <laughs> I got it right here on my device. <laughs> and um, if some days fell through the cracks, you know, we're going in this space with this anointing and this corporate anointing, we're going, we're going to take up the slack right now and, uh, and, and say who we are in Christ. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get the, 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 the service from last Sunday night. I mean, <laughs> Sunday morning. 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 4, verse, you don't have to put it up there unless you have the actual challenge. But it says, this is, you repeat after me, say, I am patient. I am, patient. I am kind. I, am kind. I, do I do not envy. I am not jealous of anyone. I, jealous of anyone. I, don't, brag. I don't brag. I'm not arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I, don't I don't behave myself rude. I don't behave myself rude. Nor, lose Nor lose control. I am not selfish, I am not selfish. or self-centered. I want other people to have whatever they need. I'm not touchy or irritable. I don't think bad thoughts about people. Nor do I keep account of their wrongs. I'm not glad about evil. I rejoice only in truth. I cover up other people's failures. I believe the best about everyone. I expect the best for everyone. I can endure, endure, anything. I endure anything. My love, My love will, never will never run out. Look at somebody across the room and say that. My love, My love will, never run out. will never run out. Yeah. So clearly this is a faith confession based on the word of God that the Bible says that this kind of love is the love that we were born again from. So it's not a question of whether or not we have it. It's in our spiritual DNA. It is literally who we are. You can't get saved without the unconditional love of God. It took his unconditional love to save you. So that is coursing through your being. So the capacity to love, like the scripture says, is in you. So we're just on this journey, just, just walking it out, walking it through. Well, happy birthday, February. <clears throat> Where, where, where are all my first uh, uh, February Saints at? Just stand up and uh, we're going to. Um, give, me, uh, give me E flat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, February. Hallelujah. February, I declare that this is going to be your year. God's going to do extraordinary things in you that you've never seen nor imagined. You're going to meet people that have divine connection and have your future in their hands. Sickness that is upon you is going to fall off. As a matter of fact, healing power is going to be upon you so that when you're around sick people, they'll be whole. The dreams that you've had for many, many years that have gone unfulfilled, this is the year where God is initiating. He's igniting the fire. He's starting the fuse on your life. God got big things for his February children. Shout hallelujah. 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 So, um, we, uh, obviously, all of our hearts are deeply, deeply, deeply moved by the, the, the tragedy that happened at MSU. And, and it just, man, I thank you, Pastor Paul, for sharing that testimony. God bless you and your family. Uh, that just brought me to tears. That right there is the preservation and the provision of God. That is God rebuking the devourer for your sake. That is God hovering over you and your loved one. That man has purpose in his life, and God preserved him for that very reason. And as great as the deliverance that he performed in that moment is the greatest anointing that's going to be on his heart to touch lives in the world that God has called him to. Thank you, Lord, for that. Father, we uphold the families 
that have been touched by this tragedy yes. on different layers. All of us have been touched in some way. But as you go toward the center, Father, there's families that have been deeply, deeply uh, forever changed. Yes. We pray for the family of Alexandria Werner, God, yes. uh, for the family of Arielle Anderson and the, pr pr uh, the family of Brian Frazier, who all lost their lives during this, God, that you could do what nobody can do, yes. which is go to the core of their hearts and effect a healing, Father. Yes. Take them through this process. It's not going to all happen today. It's not going to all happen next year. But put them on the journey, Father, uh, of, of deliverance and, and healing. Make them whole again. Give them the ability, Father, in time and in due season to be able to trust again. Father, we pray for the protection and, and for the deliverance as it comes outward, Father, of the faculty and the other students at MSU, yes. some of which are walking in fear and making decisions based on this tragedy. Father, in Jesus' name, bring healing to this, this entire community, Father. Michigan State, Father, is known throughout the world. Give healing to the world that was impacted by this, God. And yes, we do pray for wisdom, Father, in high places, in closed doors around uh, these board tables, that decisions would be made. You said that we should pray that we would be able to live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness, God. In Jesus' name, Father, restore peace to our county. Restore peace uh, to our, 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 our community. Restore peace, Father, to our state and our nation. In Jesus' name, we trust you. We trust you, God. We have to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, um, um, once again, God bless you all, and um, thank you so much, uh, to all the youth ministry and all the leaders there for being faithful and the youth that have engaged. We thank God for you that are saying yes to the call. You are bringing something into this house that's unique to you. And we're blessed every time that we see you flowing in your calling. As a matter of fact, I want to pray for the children as well. Every child in the room, stand up. And if you have a child that's not here, you can stand up and represent them. Because when I, all of our children have been affected and impacted by this. I got two daughters at home. They're recovering from about a week and a half worth of physical attack, um, but just stand up right now. Father, we thank you for our children in particular, and we lift them up for, for you, God. They have been identified, God. They have been identified as the seed of the righteous. We pray a special blessing over them, that, Father, that their hearts would be at peace and that they would be a beacon light. Let no tragedy, let nothing befall one of these. Let nothing befall one of these in Jesus' name, God. But keep them under your pavilion, God. Bring them home or take them home safely each night, God. And we pray that they would be uh, vigilant, that they would walk in wisdom, that they would be cunning, that they would sense danger, that they would sense uh, uh, even not to the point of danger, Father, but a connection or, or a relationship that, that's not for them in Jesus' Jesus name God let your grace and your glory and your wisdom be, be upon them all and bless them abundantly as the light and the seed of the righteous in Jesus name amen amen, amen. so y'all we are um, we're on a journey of discovery and I, I won't, won't take much time today a lot, a lot of ministry has happened already but I'm definitely going to share the word this in my heart um, and let me say this you know if you uh, um if this ministry, this, this experience that we have every Sunday is a blessing, um, like it. Y'all out there, like it. Share it. Um, subscribe so that the, the, the experience of God can continue to uh, mushroom outward. And I, I would encourage you and I would challenge you. Everybody can't be here on Tuesdays. I understand that. But everybody can sign on or listen later. And the reason I say that is <clears throat> not because not I, I want you to see me. I believe something's happening in this season that's significant. And a significant part of that is, is the experience that's happening on Tuesday nights. So by all means, you got to go and listen to it. Otherwise, you're missing something in the gaps. You're getting something from Sunday to Sunday, but then there's things happening in between there where things just kind of get fleshed out. And, and uh, you know, Sunday will kind of hit sometimes the highlights and introduce a concept. But then on Tuesday nights, it gets to be nuts and bolts. And and, uh, and, and framework. So by all means, go and look at it and listen to it because uh, there's, our endeavor is to constantly give you truth. Mm, yeah. And the Bible says the truth will constantly make you free. Yeah. We're committed to truth. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and don't sell it. And by actually, it means um, to pursue, to hawk down, to chase, and, to, and to, to, to overcome. Get a hold of truth and don't exchange it for anything. There's a lot of ideas in the world we live in right now. And people are exchanging truth for a good idea. 
Even if your situation is not harmonizing with the truth in your life, don't exchange the truth for your situation. Keep declaring the truth. The truth will ultimately prevail. If you have situations you deal with, you got something you might go right now, they see something you're dealing with or something out of order, you might have something broke down that needs to be fixed. Just walk up and tell you, you are not the truth. <laughs> the truth is I have all I need and more than enough. My God shall supply all my needs. Oh, I got some stuff I need to say that to. According to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you have a situation, just say, if you have, if it's somebody, don't point at them and say you're not the truth. Um, <laughs> Pull up your device and get a picture and go in the bathroom and hide it. You are not the truth. But God wants to bring truth into our lives. We have to be committed to the truth in order for him to bring to pass the things that he wants to bring to pass for us. So I'm committed to bringing you truth. Uh, actually, interestingly enough, this morning, I got up to take a last look at the word that I was going to bring today. And I, I, I do that to just kind of mull over it and just make sure it's in my heart and in my spirit and I can fluently uh, give it. And there was this one part in particular I was excited about bringing y'all. I was fired up. Well, I had something for you. <laughs> Until I discovered it wasn't the truth. Oh, wow. was going through it, and the Holy Spirit said, look that word up right there. And I did. And it totally derailed the whole point. So I took it right out of the message <laughs> and put it somewhere else because I'm committed to the truth. You know why? Because I had an idea. I, 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 all of us know enough about the scripture to navigate whatever it is we have to do. I know enough about the scripture to be able to go some places, but I went down that trail and along the way did not look, do, did not know what I needed to do. And the Lord just pointed out one simple thing, and there it was, and it just totally took that apart. And I said, That's not truth. I can't say it. It would have sounded good. Some of y'all might have ran around the church and, and just fell out on the floor and cried. It was good, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, it felt good. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that now. Ain't the truth. I read that letter the first day. I told y'all, I won't always have all the answers, but I will always seek God. Amen. So that's where we are. So give me, uh, so put Romans 1.20 up there. Don't have a lot of time, but we're just going to move forward here. Romans 120. We keep coming back here during this series. Um, in this series today, I'm initiating um, a, a leg of this journey called Jesus Is. We've been in God Is for the past weeks. Today, it initiates Jesus Is. This says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and godhood, so that they, we'll talk about they later, are without excuse. Since his creation, no, 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 thank you. Since his creation, invisible attributes of God are constantly unfolding and made clear, even his eternal power and godhood. Put that image up there for me, the first image. I have to do this today to, to make sure that this comes across. This is a tree. This is a tree in my backyard. Say, this is a tree. This is a tree. In his backyard. In his backyard. Give me the next image. This is the same tree in my backyard. This is one tree in my backyard. Say, this is, one tree this is one tree in his backyard. In his backyard. Back away. Give me the next image. This is the same tree in my backyard. It is one tree. It has one root system. It shares one DNA. But it has three distinct branches. 
three distinct powerful branches. It's a really big tree. Each of those branches serves a slightly different purpose and covers a slightly different part of my yard. Each branch also has features along it that distinguish it from the others, but it is still one tree. One root system, one DNA, one tree with three distinctive functional parts. This image is this vessel's endeavor to display the reality of the Trinity himself. Have to do that today because some of the things I say could, may not, but could challenge you. Because this is, a, this is a, a really, really mysterious thing, but it's very powerful if we come to believe it. So give me St. John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, who? The Word. And without him... Nothing that was, it was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it or, 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 or couldn't overcome it, is really what that means. So this is the opening of, of John's gospel, the, the very first five verses. And it is often said of the gospel of John that it does not include a, ge a genealogy. That's not true. Uh, Matthew and Luke both have very noted and obvious genealogies. Matthew's genealogy, genealogy goes from Abraham forward to Jesus. Luke's genealogy starts with the birth of Jesus and goes backwards to Adam. And then says Adam, then being the son of God. Each of these has a temporal genealogy. But John gives an eternal genealogy. Each of them gave a human genealogy, but God, John gives a divine genealogy. In, in, the, in this prologue, what he does is he mentions two persons uh, in the Trinity. Why only two? Because something is about to happen in the earth that is a major shift. It's a passing of the baton between two members of the Trinity. It's going to go from, and the way people deal with diff God is about to drastically change. Up to this point, according to Exodus 25 and 8, you don't have to turn there, we were in a state or a dispensation of something called God among us. In Exodus 25, 8, God said to Moses, build me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. What that means is, before that time, God didn't dwell among men. He was in heaven. He made momentary appearances. He would affect things, but he did not dwell here at all. God said, I want to come closer. So make me a place that is totally set apart, designed like I tell you to, and I'm going to dwell among men there. What that meant was God dwelling among men is like I'm in this room. I'm among you. Let's say it that way. I'm standing right here um, next to evangelist Angela Hook. She has different access to me than you do. She could reach out and touch me. But right back there, uh, let me pick somebody. I'm trying to get somebody. Wesley. Wesley has to close a greater distance between me and him because I'm not moving. I'm always right here. This was the situation on planet Earth. No matter where in the world you were back then, God was only in one place. He said, make me a place and I'm going to go there. And anybody needs to talk to me, they need to come there. So he sat there in that temple and behind the Holy of the Holies over that ark on the, sitting on the mercy seat. And then he designed a hole. He told them, he said, if y'all approach me, this is what you better do now. I'm not playing. I, I, 
I, I don't play. So do everything like I'm telling you to. Go talk to the priest. Tell him what you want. And then he'll come a little closer and intercede on your behalf. Give him the right animal, the slave the animal. And I will answer according to those stipulations. But this is where I am. This is where I'm going to be. And this is how I do things. Right now, that's the state of the world. But there's a shift about to happen. Yeah. Yahweh God is about to pass the baton yeah. to the next member of the Trinity that the Bible introduces as the word. And the Bible says about him, both in the Old Testament and the New, in Matthew 1, 23, he said his name shall be called Emmanuel because he shall be God with us. Oh. Now it's different because unlike the Father, Jesus is mobile. And unlike the Father, Jesus is approachable. You couldn't just reach out and start grabbing on God or none of his stuff. <laughs> Ask Uzzah. Uzzah was a good man trying to do a good thing and stop the ark of God from falling on the ground. But even in his good intentions, you can't just go grabbing up on God. It just wasn't like that. <laughs> Different dispensation. But so now if I stand here, I can come where you are. And if I can't get to where you are because Jesus, the crowd is so big, you can come to where I am. So God with us is another level of access. And this is the moment that that baton is being passed. And there's about to be a change in how everybody deals with God. So now John doesn't deal with natural genealogy for a reason. John is looking forward and at the intimate ministry of Jesus in the way that the other apostles did not. So John doesn't deal with the natural genealogy because when one believes, the emphasis of your genealogy shifts from a natural one to a spiritual one. Now everything is different. And it's tragic, especially in our day, that people are making decisions on what they believe on some really I get why those things are important. I get why your ethnicity is important. I get why your nationality and, and all those things are important. But don't base what you believe eternally on that. Once you believe in Christ, yeah, you still got your mama. Yeah, you still got your sisters and your brothers and your cousins and your uncles and your play brothers. And you got all that stuff. Love them and keep them like Christ loved the church. But your genealogy just changed. You're from somewhere different now. The Bible says you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You got a new father on the inside right now, and he has changed the whole game. You got new life. You got new expectations. You got new hope. You got new help. The stuff you can't call your natural genealogy for. You got a spiritual genealogy right now that you can reach out from wherever you are with whatever you're dealing with. You've got access. So he, God wants everything to think differently. John is introducing the word or the title of this message is the one called Jesus. He wants to them to think differently about the one called Jesus. Because by this time, different messages have gone out about him. Jesus, is, he's died, buried, been rose again. And the conversation about Jesus is going out. And John wants to set the record straight. And he wants all of us to understand that there's something very, very different about the one we call Jesus. So it says, in the beginning was the word. So the word is the subject of this entire conversation. It mentions God, the Father, Yahweh, but it's really about what the Bible's calling the Word. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The word was there is, is, is what's called imperfect in, in, in the Hebrew language. It's continuous action that happened in the past. It's not something that just took place in the past, but it continued. We've moved on, but that thing was never ended in the conversation. The activity in the past never ended. So when the Bible says in the beginning, he was the word, is he was being the word. 
It's that was in the past is, is in the present. And so it never stopped being true. So it's saying even then he was being the word. Jesus, as I was saying, in the, if Jesus was speaking for himself, it would be saying, in the beginning, I am the word. I still am in the past. Not he was, as in he used to be, but he was, he always was. He was, he still is, and he always will be. He's saying, I am still in the past. I am still in the present. I am still in the future. As far back as you can look and as how forward you can look, I am. John 8, 58 declares this. Jesus, and so let me give you the scenario here. Uh, the uh, Pharisees are sweating him. He made a statement they didn't like about his father. He said, they said, uh, Abraham is our father. Who's your father? And that was actually a slight because... The, Tradition and history says that Jesus was considered because he, Mary was pregnant before him and Joseph left. He had another father. So they're actually digging at him right here. Our father is Abraham. Who's your father? And Jesus said, most assuredly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Don't play with me. I don't come from around here. This is not my origin. This is not my home. This is not my destination. I came here for you. So keep yourself straight. Before Abraham was and your mama was, I am. It's the same thing God said to Moses out there at burning bush. Moses said, um, who will I say that you sent me? I am. <laughs> There is no place in time or space where he does not exist. Amen. There is no space or time in your life, no matter where somewhere you've been or where you're going, there's no place in your life that the I am, that the word, that Jesus Christ himself has not already been gaining your victory in that space. In the past he am and in the future he am still. He just am, y'all. <laughs> you can think about the most dreaded thing in your life, and all of us have something that just, whenever our minds go there, it just starts nagging because we don't quite know what to do with it, and we're afraid to move in that direction because we don't know how this is going to pan out. If you stay here, things will erode and get bad, and if you step here, things will get bad right quick, and so you end up stuck somewhere because you can't see into that space that you're thinking into, but the I am is already there. The reason I'm saying these things is I want to introduce to you another, another uh, level of the person of Jesus Christ so that you can believe in him at that level. Okay. Beginning. He said, in the beginning. Why does John start here? In the beginning, I believe because he needs to underst us to understand his power. It says, in the beginning was the word. Now, if you look at that, it said from our vernacular, what that can sound like is, in the beginning, there was a beginning and he was in it. That's not what this is saying. The beginning and Jesus did not arrive, uh, the beginning and the word did not arrive on the scene at the same time. He was already there and then created the scene. Being there is the effect of his existence, meaning he caused the beginning. In fact, this word in the Greek beginning literally means the cause. As a matter of fact, in the book of Genesis, when the Bible says in the beginning, in the is not in the Hebrew language. The first word in the Bible is beginning. It said, beginning God. Or 
in order to begin, God, or initiating the beginning, God. Give me Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. This word beginning is the cause. Who is the cause? Jesus, the word, the, the, the trinity, the word caused everything that is. He was there. There's a, a, a scripture in Revelation 3.14. Put that up there. People, there's heresies built on this right here. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right? these things saith the amen, the faithful and true, uh, true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I've had people try to hawk me down uh, that, that, that believe something else about Jesus. See, look, Jesus right here. Jesus Christ was created by his father. That doesn't mean the beginning as in the first thing God created. That means Jesus is the cause of creation. I said this a couple weeks ago. If God can fix his chaotic world, he can fix your chaotic world. So this, this was something that was initiated by God. So it says, was, it says the word was with God and the word was God. Why is John having this conversation? And, 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 and if it's true that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, then where is the word in that factor? Where the word Elohim, which is the word in the beginning God created, is a plural word. Everywhere in Genesis 1 where you see creation, it is plural. And that's why John is having this conversation because the creation includes a plurality. And the Hebrews understood the plurality of Trinity, and they just didn't know all the participants. So the Trinity in creation, this is what it looks like. And this kind of follows through the activity of, 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 of the Trinity throughout the, 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 the Scripture. The Father planned creation. The Word expressed the creation. And the Spirit applied the creation. The Father planned creation, and I can show you that all over the Bible and don't have time, where it was in his heart long before the book of Isaiah said God had the world inside of him formed in a certain way. So the Father planned creation. The Word expressed the creation. How? Because the Father, the Bible says, and God, God, plural, said, let there be light. And so the Word himself expressed what was in the mind of God and made it available now on this onslaught. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of this mess, waiting on what? The word from the plan of God to be spoken so that he can move upon the matter and cause matter to become a world that was habitable. God's got your plan. His son is the living word. And his spirit is alive right now to apply. Once you believe something about God, then the Holy Spirit begins to move about your life to make sure that what you believe happens. So, I'm going to wrap this up. Let's go right here. So here's the question. Is this pre-incarnate being in his pre-existent state the word? Is this Jesus? Stick with me. Not yet. John says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Why is he doing that? He's trying to show you another part of the manifestation of the one we call Jesus. He's keeping the idea of his pre-existence separate. So was this word the word Jesus? Not yet. It called him the son of God and Yahweh his father. But the word had no father yet. Not until he humbled himself and came to the world as a child. He didn't have a father until that point. You know why? Because he was God. The word wasn't a son yet, not until he was born of a woman he created. 
He was God. The word was not begotten yet. Not until the word took upon himself and dwelt among us his own creation. Because he was God. You got to see Jesus in an existence other than the things that he did on earth. Why am I saying the one called Jesus? Because we have to understand the progressive revelation of his person. We got to go back before this started and see who he was, it was so we can trust him on that level. We know who he was when he came to the earth, but do we understand who he was before that? He was God. He laid aside his divinity so he could come here and be our savior. Why is this important for us to understand? I'm wrapping this up. It's, under, it's important because it's important that we understand the magnitude of the one we call Jesus. Most of what we know about him is his earthly existence. He is the creator who entered his own creation to save it. Yeah. He became the son of God when he was born of a woman that he created. Before he was the word, he was with God. He was God. The father wants all of us to know the one who we call Jesus is God. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the words and the deeds of Jesus are the words and the deeds of God. The story didn't start with a man on earth. It started with a God in heaven. He didn't begin with the beginning. He began the beginning. I'm not trying to diminish his earthly ministry. I'm trying to highlight his heavenly origin. The one that died on the cross for you, the only... The only way that his sacrifice on the cross would work is that it had to be God dying. Because there was no human being that was a worthy sacrifice. Someone sinless had to die for your eternal salvation. And the only sinless ones dwelt amongst the Trinity. And Jesus submitted and humbled himself and came to this earth and wrapped himself in flesh like you and I so that he could be God as the sacrifice to God. God himself died on the cross for your sins. He didn't come from here. He came down here. And this same Jesus that gave everything for you. The Bible says, if God the Father did not withhold from his, us his only son, why won't he freely give you anything? Yeah. I want you to consider your, your, your greatest dilemma your greatest trauma, your greatest drama, it pales in the face of the Lord Jesus. We're going to get to where the story went from here in a few weeks. I don't want to spoiler alert things. But suffice to say, he is more than enough for whatever you're facing. And he wants you to trust him on a level. I know in some instances it might be difficult to say that Jesus is God because there are belief systems out there that kind of corrupt that idea. But like that image I put up there, there's one tree, three branches, one God. And right now we're focusing and putting our eyes on the one called Jesus, who is God. He has the power to demolish any enemy in your life, anything that's dogging you. He went through as God everything that you could possibly face 
and he went through it flawlessly so he could deliver to you a flawless deliverance one day in the thing that you discover, the thing that you, that you, you, that you face, that you're going through and being treaded through. Father, thank you right now. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We're coming to know who you are. Reveal yourself to us. Show us your glory. Show us your face. Transform us on the inside. The scripture calls you an everlasting father. As your children, we plead with you to reveal the parts of you that we need to see for what you're calling to us to. Next. I want to offer to Jesus, to anybody in this room or even out there online that doesn't know him. And I really want you to think about this. I really want you to consider this. Because Jesus Christ is your Savior. Jesus Christ is, the Bible said, the Savior of the world. But you know what will happen? Many people in the world will ignore him and die with him, die in that state with him having been their Savior that they never accepted. Don't leave this earth with a Savior as if you're somebody without a Savior. There is one way to eternal life. There is one way to eternal life. There is one way to eternal life. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you don't have a notable moment in your life when you believed on him and asked him to come in your heart, you need to do that. Because you don't want to leave this life without the only one that can save you in the next. Save you from the other destination. If you're somebody that either knows you haven't accepted Christ or you're not sure, I want you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you today. Because our Savior is in the room. And he wants to get to you where you are. If you're someone that actually you, you, you did accept Christ, he's right there with you still walking. He's still talking to you. He's the voice that told you to come today. He's the voice that when trouble is near, he'll whisper it in your ear or tells you don't make a decision. And that's, that's still the voice of God right there in your ear. If you're somebody that did accept Christ, but you, if you, have, you have to admit that you've stepped away. You, you've, you've, there's, there's distance grown between you and him. And you want to close that distance today. Raise your hand where you are. And I want to pray for you. Thank you. I see you, sir. Anybody else? Just be bold today because there's a lot at stake. Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else? Okay, you can put your hands down. What I want to do, and I'm, I'm going to offer prayer for one more thing after we do this. I want to pray with you. And I, want, I saw some people's hands go up. I want you to be courageous enough to close the distance between you and Jesus. And with your faith, walk up to the altar. And I'm going to lead you in the prayer that solidifies your relationship with God. Every guy about to give God praise while these come. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Good. Come on. No shame. No shame. Come on. Come on. Step forward. Jesus is waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Thank you, son, for your boldness. Come on. I, I, I know there's someone else out there. This is not the time to be shy. This, this moment, you, 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 you won't be uh, uh, called out or, or, or made to look. So what's this? See, here's, here's what you need to know. The other people that are sitting down in the room, trust me, they, 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 they do this. <laughs> Every one of us in here ask God to forgive us at some point in life. We just don't wait till we get to church. We just, we just do it out there. But this is your day. This is a moment. God's going to solidify something. God's going to anchor something. God's going to, he's going to establish something in you. Let me give one more appeal to give you a chance. 
Because Jesus is present with unconditional love and compassion. Yeah. So along with these, everybody in this room, say, Lord, Lord I thank you for your son, Jesus. He died for me. He rose for me. And because of that, I'm your child. I may have strayed some. I may have done some things that don't please you. But you said if I confess my fault, you're faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So, Father, affect your cleansing in Jesus' name in the life of each of these that have been bold enough, that have been courageous enough, that have been obedient enough, Father, to step into this space. I believe that you're establishing something in them right now, God, where they have the strength to move forward from this place come consistently toward you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. God bless you all. Is there anybody in the room that needs healing? You all can go back and have your seats. But I do want to see you briefly after church. If, if, if I spread you, I don't know you if you want. Just you can go have, back and sit down and come to me after church. If you need healing um, in your body <clears throat> um, and even in your soul, I, I want to say this. There, there, there is a, there is a, um, um, and my wife was, was talking to me this morning about this. <clears throat> and, and actually has been for some time. There's this, there's this, there's this lingering oppression to where it, it, can just, it, it can just creep in in a moment. Things will be going this way, going well, and then all of a sudden, there's something there that you, I, I, sometimes I, I'll be going along good, and there'll just be nagging my soul that, that, that wants to pull me down to this space, <clears throat> and, and, I, and I have to try to fight my way up out of that. There's deliverance for oppression in the room today. Hallelujah. If you deal with that, if you deal with depression, oppression, Sometimes it doesn't even seem to have a cause. Sometimes it's like when you bake a cake. You, 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 you put a bunch of stuff in it, but once it's baked, you can't tell what all is in there. Sometimes our life goes through the fire and the oven like that, and things can happen that just they just they just kind of move on. But it, it stays with you. There's something still there, and we want to pray for you today. I, um, come on up. I need some ministers to come up and help us today. So um, we want to pray for you that God would break that thing. Yes, Lord and lifts you up out of that place. You don't have to know what it's tied to. God knows what it's tied to. If you know what it's tied to and it's something that you want to renounce or talk to God about, do it right there, right there up under your breath. But you don't even have to know. The enemy will slip in before you know it, but God has the remedy. Jesus Christ himself is the power of deliverance and healing in this room today. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Go back to the living word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bread of heaven. Mm -hmm. You're a holy priest. Up and turn. You got the oil. You are the living mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So whose ailment is, is physical? Lift your hand. I want to see who's physical, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, you can put your hands down. Yeah. So those with physical ailments, just come stem right here real close. Thank you so much, Mia. Yeah, just line up right here. said by your stripes we are healed himself took our sicknesses and bore our infirmities 
He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our nickels. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We make a withdrawal on your power today. Heal your daughter in the name of Jesus. Hey. Heal your daughter in the name of Jesus. Things she knows about and things she does not. You know it all. Heal your daughter in the name of Jesus. Ma, 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 ma. Jesus, you're in the room to heal. You're in the room right now to heal. Heal your daughter. Ah, heal your daughter. Yes, Lord. Heal your daughter. Yes, Lord. Heal your daughter in the yes, name of Lord. Jesus. Of every affliction, every ailment, every system, every organ in the body. Heal your son in the name of Jesus. Correct, God, what is misaligned. Develop what is undeveloped. Cause to live what is dead and cause to die what should not live. Heal him by your miraculous power. In the name of Jesus, God, heal your daughter. 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 Miraculously, suddenly, completely, in the name of Jesus. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, mm. ah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom I am and whom I serve, daughter of God, I say that you are healed. You are mended. You are made whole. You are restored. You are refreshed. You are complete. And every system in your body shall function in the way that God designed you to function. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Completely made whole. Hey, now, spirit of oppression and depression, accompanied by fear and anxiety and hopelessness, I command you in Jesus' name upon the laying on of hands upon the laying on of hands we say that these people will be loosed from their soul's infirmity they will be loosed from the spirit of infirmity oppression you have to go depression you have to go anxiety you have to go hopelessness you have to go racing and uncontrollable thoughts you have to go in the name of Jesus ah yeah 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 Daughter of God, be free in Jesus' name. 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 But I got it there. Let there be a lifting, 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 a blowing away of the clouds, a restoration of the sun, a healing in the depth of the soul, a wounded spirit who can bear it. Oh God, but you lift those up. You are wounded for her wounds, and your daughter's free in the name of Jesus. Loose the Son of God in Jesus' name. Loose him in Jesus' name. Loose his soul. Loose his heart. Loose his mind in Jesus' name. Ah, let the Son of God be made whole in Jesus' name. Loose, 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 loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. We rebuke the Spirit of God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, in the name of Jesus. Loose your daughter, Father, in Jesus' name. Ma, ha, da, ba, sha. Ah, yeah, ha, ba,